The following program is made possible through funding from Duval County Schools. Sports play an important role in our nation's economy, and Duval County Public Schools strives to provide its students with both a rigorous athletic program and a variety of sports in which to participate. On today's Real School, we will meet the coaches, players, and teams that represent the best of Duval County Athletics. Team the one country in the world where the majority... Hi, I'm Chelsea Miranda. And I'm Seth Hedstrom. And welcome to Real School, the only television show that's dedicated to bringing you the best of Duval County Public Schools. Now let's get started with a look at two of the district's top coaches. I graduated Liverstone College in 92, and when I came home, uh, waiting on some, some job offers, one of the colleagues of mine told me, well, you might as well start uh, subbing until you get the hear back from whoever it was, and then from there, it just launched off. I think it started when I was about six years old. I started playing at a uh, large Lee boys club off of Tilton Liberty. And from there, uh, I took my endeavors to college and now I came back and started teaching. And since I was already teaching, I might as well give back the knowledge that I had. I wanted to be a teacher because uh, the kids nowadays need someone to guide them, teach them, and help them through some difficult times. You know how to play it? On game night, first thing that went through my mind was that uh, the things that we preached and taught for years, but now can finally you can see some success from it. some of the plays. Uh, with some basic backdoor picks, uh, some basic motions, some screens, some stuff that our kids. I used to go into the park and do them, but just fine tuning the form. We won the Gateway Conference, we won the district, we went to the uh, regional quarterfinals. So we had a real, real good year. Unfortunately, we lost in the quarterfinals, and, and our goal all the time is to be the state champions, and that's our number one goal. You have a little stuff that you want to X out, get to that goal, and we X out pretty much everything that we wanted to, except for that state championship. And the most challenging part for high school basketball would be not, not the court, but all the outside influence that you had. But we had a lot of people from various places that hasn't been in the system a while and, and until we got those together. And then we had to weed out some people too that, that really wasn't for our program. But now that we got those people out and we got together, you see what, what can happen. But the most rewarding part would be to see the kids' eyes and their faces after all the stuff we preach and then they accomplish something. It's like a light bulb just pop on the top of their head. That's the most rewarding thing for me. The things that you take for granted sometimes is really not what you really think it is. You know, you have to take the small steps and value all the little things first to get the rewards of the big stuff. Being a part of a team sport helps the kids by when they, when they leave here. If they go to college, you're going to be a part of some team. Even if they don't go to college and you get into the work force and the work world, you're still going to have to be part of a team. So putting all of that together with athletics can help them further themselves in life. First got into baseball and I played Little League and worked progressed. I went to Stillwell Middle School, which is Stillwell Junior High. Played three years there, went at seven through nine. Then I went to Lee High School, played 10 through 12. 
Then I played at Florida Junior College for two years, JU for two years, and played in the Montreal Expos farm system two years. When I got through with the Expos, I just I started teaching, and I was over at Paxson Junior High, and I coached baseball over there one year. That was in 1979. And then the baseball job came open here at Ed White, so I applied for the job and, and got it. So this is my 20, 28th year doing this. Hi, Travis. Come on. Well, you're trying to figure out who you have coming back from last year. This year, we only have one, one senior back that's hurt. And so the whole team pretty much, I got three juniors that played before and everybody else is brand new. So this is a, the youngest team I've ever had in the 28 years here. Be ready, because we may need to throw you in there real quick. One, two, three. Ready, good job. Most challenging part of baseball is trying to teach those ninth graders as they grow up to, to uh, what they're going to learn later on in life, how they're going to uh, be team builders. He bounces for me. The most challenging part of teaching this team is they're so young, we have to do the fundamentals that they hadn't been taught in the earlier ages. The pitching has improved from the first game that we lost 16 to nothing to Fleming Island, which was one of the better teams Friday night. It was 7 to 3, so we were in the game the whole time. So hopefully we can put every all those aspects together, the pitching, the hitting, and the fielding, Hopefully this improved a whole lot. Being part of a team sport is important for these kids because it's to learn teamwork for later on in life, uh, just in any job they do, how to be disciplined, to cope, or to uh, be able to work out in the workforce just to get ready for later in life. And I have so many players that come back and tell me how appreciative they are of what we've done and taught them in the past. I got my, one of my assistant coaches played for me in 1998-99. He came back. He's helping me. The, the previous assistant coach was one of my players. He's helped me. So they're all wanting to come back and help. I just don't have enough positions to help them. <laughs> I only have two spots. And so I just have to take who, the first one I can get in. How to play. The most rewarding part of this job is when they win after you've worked so hard with them. And it just takes time. So we're young, and so it's going to take time for us to win. When we come back, we'll introduce you to two of the district's top female athletes. A Duval County Public Schools, did you know? 4.2 million. That's the number of high school students nationwide who participated in sports last year. These athletes experienced about 1.4 million injuries, a 50% decrease from the last decade. Injury rates were at least two times higher in the mid-90s than they were last year. Duval County Public Schools, inspiring dreams that influence tomorrow. Desiree O'Neill and Lucy Barksdale are two students who exemplify excellence in Duval County Public Schools. One is a basketball player and the other a tennis player. Here are their stories. about basketball was the aggressiveness and the teamwork and the coaches. Just being able to play with a team as talented as, as mine and with everyone loving it the way that I do is, is very, very fascinating. As the game starts, the first thing that runs through my mind is play hard, good defense. Take your time on free throws, do what you can do, play my best, and help my team out. A typical play that you would see would be our 2-1-2 two -two offense. Uh, it basically spreads the court and lets me do anything that is possible for me to do inside the paint, or I can help my guards out by doing the pick and roll or the give and go. The most challenging part of basketball would be defense. Uh, knowing that this person is taller than you or faster than you, you still have to outthink them and know that you have to defend this person in the game. The most fun part of basketball would be winning, playing together as a team, uh, just having fun, doing everything that we could do, and just playing our best.
My English class is my favorite because it's, it's interesting to learn so much about it, especially things that I've never heard of or thought of. And with as many people as it is that has done so much, and it's just exciting to know who they are and what they did. I would like to be known as a good basketball player, one of the best, if possible. Um, I think it just put my name out there and helped me out and everything. In the future, I would love to be a psychologist. Andrew Jackson has prepared me by the classes that I have been taking, by the teachers staying on me and helping me out, just telling me things that I need to do and preparing me for things. And my work, uh, and I would say mostly my friends too, that keeps me there and lets me know that, you know, can't get off track and hurt yourself. So, yeah, teachers, work, and my friends. I first got into tennis um, probably when I was like six or seven years old just because a group of my friends were doing like summer clinics. Well just starting at such a young age it was just a fun thing to do and fun people. It just kept my interest. It's, you know you're always moving. It's never, it never really gets boring. Well I never really think about my opponent. I more think about what I'm going to do because you can, you, honestly, if they're experienced, you can never tell how your opponent's going to play. They can look fierce and then, you know, not be, or vice versa. But um, I just think about what I'm going to do to, like, I just think about winning one point at a time, basically. The most fun part of tennis is probably just because it's such a challenge. There's always different, like, strategies and games, and everybody's game is different, so it's always a challenge to play different opponents. My favorite class is art because it's just the whole environment is just nice. You can, it's kind of you have your own time, you do your own projects, you, you have guidelines but you're, you're kind of on your own to do your own stuff and it's pretty, I mean it's laid back but we still have enough like guidance to make good art I think. School athletics are important because it helps to make the students more well-rounded. It's not just you go to school to you do for academics, but also athletics just produces, I think, people who are better in life. They can succeed if you're well-rounded. Well, Paxson, I would say, is definitely more um, rigorous than some high schools. So I definitely have learned um, time management and just prioritize your things in life and so I think that'll be perfect for college because when you're on your own you have to have a lot of time management. There's not, you know, teachers breathing down your back saying you have to turn it in. And, but I think I've got that from Paxson. I hope to go to college, next year's college. Um, I'm gonna, I'm planning on studying civil engineering at Clemson University. So. Um, just to keep up with my studies and have a good job and career and just keep doing the things I love to do. When we come back, a look at two of the district's amazing sports teams. A Duval County Public Schools, did you know? 3,700. That's the number of acres of grass that is cut around the Duval County school system each month. This includes football fields, playgrounds, and open areas. Now that's a lot of grass. 
Duval County Public Schools. Inspiring dreams set influence tomorrow. Team sports provide students with a healthy after-school activity while also teaching them the value of working together. Here's a look at two of the district's top teams, Stanton Lacrosse and Mandarin Softball. Lacrosse is a sport that began as an old Indian game uh, before Americans even came to this country. It has been growing ever since and it's been exploding in Florida for the last 10 years, and especially in Northeast Florida now for the last five, it's really been coming along. Nine, one, two, three, ten. A lot of things about lacrosse is similar to other sports. Uh, with our game, we've got 10 players to a team. You have three attackmen. Uh, they're on the offensive end of the field. You have three defensemen and a goalie on the defensive end of the field. Then you have three other positions called midfield, and they're able to go all over the field playing on attack and on defense as they chase the ball around and get the ball and try to score. The object of the game is to score a goal just like in hockey. Uh, we have penalties similar to football such as you can't hit people from behind or below the knees. Uh, also we have padding uh, to protect the players, helmets, shoulder pads, arm pads because since we do use sticks it's very similar to hockey when you're able to check the sticks and check the people as long as they got their hands on the stick those things can be legal. Good luck, have fun. The games are 12-minute uh, quarters in high school, and of course whoever scores the most goals wins. They're going to jump you real quick. They're going to jump, they're going to slide right off, and they're going to play you real quick. So you got to catch it and shoot it. Well, I play long pole midi, and um, during face-offs, you'd want someone like me to either pick the ball up, or if we were to lose a face-off, you'd have another D pole to actually play defense for your team. I play midfield. Um, I myself am responsible for taking the face off at the beginning of the game or after a goal or a quarter and then I'm the midfield position is responsible for getting the ball up and down the field between defense and attack. I play the position of attack. So the job is for the attack is to, to maintain the offense and try and set up and score goals for the team. Man ball, call for the ball. You can't get the ball, call for a man. I got the man, you got the ball. Playing solid defense with your whole team is very difficult because it's hard to cooperate with all your defenders, but once you can do that, you can be pretty unstoppable. The hardest part of lacrosse for me is probably the hits I have to take from defenders. That's what I feel it is because I get, I get bruised, I get knocked up all the time. The most challenging part of coaching lacrosse at the high school level here in Duval County now is just teaching the basics to these kids. Uh, lacrosse is very new, especially in the, in the public schools. Uh, the private schools like Bowles and Episcopal uh, have been playing for about 10 years and they've got a good recruiting program and a good program coming up with the young kids in their school system. Duval County is just starting so there are a lot of people that have never played the sport before. They're calling a tight game so they're seeing it. So just take it. DLT, DLT! One, two, three, three, one! I think being part of a team sport is important because it, it helps you build good friendships with your team and how to cooperate with other individuals, I mean. These guys on my team over here, I, I've gotten very close to them over the past three years because we've been playing since we're freshmen. The most fun part about playing lacrosse is just uh, being with your friends and just getting better at a game that isn't really big around this part of town or country. Definitely getting a good hit on someone is the most rewarding part of the game. The most fun part is scoring goals. Scoring a goal just makes you feel good about yourself, I guess, I don't know. Makes you feel like you've done a good job. Get out that side arm now, Josh. I uh, saw some kids last year. Last year was my first year coaching at the high school level. And just seeing the improvement the kids made, uh, even brand new kids that have never picked up a stick by the end of the season, they're playing well. One of those guys is playing almost all the time right now on our team this year. And a good athlete can pick the sport up and really improve well and continue to improve throughout their high school career. Originally, softball was known as slow pitch, which many consider more of 
a defensive game. It's a little bit easier to hit the ball during slow pitch. Fast pitch, the game is a lot faster. Um, bunning is allowed, stealing is allowed. It's a lot more similar to the game of baseball. Fast pitch softball is different from baseball in that, for one, for example, uh, baseball players can take a lead before the pitcher releases the ball, whereas in fast pitch softball, the pitcher must release the ball before the runner can step off the bag. Um, also, the, obviously, the dimensions of the field are on a smaller scale than they would be in the sport of baseball. Um, there are other technical rules that are a little bit different. DH, in, in the sport of baseball, you have a designated hitter. In fast pitch softball, you have a, a DP flex. Well, when I was younger, my brother used to play baseball, and I used to really look up to him, so I decided to follow his footsteps, and baseball, I didn't really like it too much because, you know, all the boys used to think that, oh, she's just a girl, but out here, I'm just like everyone else. Well, I started when I was four, so I don't know, just back then, I just needed something to do, and my parents signed me up and just stuck with it. I've started playing ball. Since I was five, I started with t-ball, then moved up to baseball, and slow pitch softball. After baseball, slow pitch was not challenging enough, so fast pitch was my next choice. The most challenging part of fast pitch softball is just cool for pitching and from a pitcher's perspective is probably like knowing what pitches to throw to which batters because certain certain batters have different strengths and weaknesses. The most challenging part about this game, I think, would be is working as a team. Sometimes girls tend to be a little moody and sometimes we tend to snap at people and you just gotta learn to ignore that and play as a team. Being part of the team sport um, builds character um, great characteristics like discipline, determination, leadership. We have had a great deal of success when it comes to sending girls off to the next level to play softball, college softball. Um, we've signed, this year, we've, of our three seniors, we've already signed one. Uh, Tallahassee Community College, Kelly Davis signed a scholarship there. Um, Morgan O'Keefe, we're working on trying to get her a scholarship as well as Jessica Rodriguez. Um, I know college is, is definitely out there for both of them. The most fun part about fast pitch softball would have to be winning. Um, winning is always a great feeling, especially knowing that you've done it with nine other or eight other girls on the team. For me, it's winning. I love to win and I like striking people out and getting people out. The funnest part about fast pitch softball is spending time with your girlfriends. Uh, we're always together. We perform well in school. We're together as one all the time. And they're your sisters, they're your best friends. Mandarin High School has prepared me for my future by allowing me to learn not only on the field but off the field educationally. Um, it's also helped me grow. It's taught me how to take care of myself, how to be responsible, and out here it's taught me how to just let everything go and focus and you put your mind to anything, you can achieve it. The most rewarding part is, is to see these girls mature over the years and, and to see them play ball at the next level. To see them play ball in college is, is a very special thing. It's, it's, very, it's a very rewarding feeling to see them sign that scholarship and to move on and watch them play ball. Duval County speaks out when we come back. A Duval County Public Schools, did you know? 148%. That's the increase from last year of the number of Duval County students enrolled in advanced placement courses. 
Last school year, there were fewer than 5,000 students enrolled in AP classes, while this year there are more than 10,000. Duval County Public Schools, inspiring dreams that influence tomorrow. Now for our question of the month. Why are athletics important in education? School athletics are important because it, it helps the athletes stay focused on their schoolwork so they can um, maybe get a, a scholarship to a college for athletics. School athletics are important because it keeps teens out of trouble and drugs and all that kind of stuff that I don't need to be into. Well, it kind of gives us something to look forward to after like a hard day at school, but like it helps us out and helps us to look forward and like gives us more, we learn discipline and like we learn um, how to behave outside of school. Um, school athletics are important because it keeps teens focused on things outside of school too, but also schoolwork and things involved with the school. To learn more about the Duval County Public School System, check us out online at dreamsbeginhere.org. Until next time, I'm Chelsea Miranda. And I'm Seth Hedstrom, and thanks for watching Real School. The preceding program was made possible through funding from Duval County Schools.